I'd like to call to order the 13th meeting of the 2014-2015 Common Council. Would the clerk please call the roll for the meeting? There are 15 present. Uh, Alderman Joe Heideman is excused. Tonight we have some students from the civics class of Sharon Abel at LTC. I'd like to ask them to come forward in the front here and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next would be resignations. City Attorney. Now there's an email from uh, Alderman Carlson to the mayor advising that he's resigning from the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force uh, due to uh, conflict with his schedule. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion <laughs> and support. Any discussion? I do need another volunteer from the Alderman group, so please keep that in mind if you're interested. You're welcome. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, there are no council appointments this evening. Uh, next will be a presentation. This is a presentation of our 2015 employee health plan options by Sandy Rourke, Director of Human Services. Welcome, Sandy. <clears throat> should say that there's been a lot of work done by the, the Finance Committee, the Finance Staff, the uh, salary and Grievances Committee and Sandy's department on this, so I appreciate all the work that's gone in for our options to be considered. one of the largest expenses health insurance in the city so this does get a lot of attention insured employees for the city of Sheboygan have done a great job at containing cost resulting in no increase in the cost of health insurance for the past four years this trend is not projected to continue as our experience has escalated every year in addition we have medical inflation of 11 percent and we have additional cost to our plan because of the Affordable Care Act. In an effort to continue to contain, to provide our employees with affordable, valuable coverage, we need to develop a strategy towards consumerism. Basically, consumerism is when people spend their own money, they make better choices. A couple examples of consumerism, if your doctor says that you need an MRI, you can ask your doctor if you can go to the Smart Choice Clinic on Taylor Drive and the cost of that MRI will be $600 instead of $2,900. Another example, generic medication. You can ask your pharmacist 
if your medication is available in ger generic format. Or you don't have to use your insurance card, simply pay the $4 where available. In 2015, non-rep city employees will have a choice in plan designs. Option one will be 750 or 1500 first dollar deductible, or the second option will be a high deductible plan, 1500 <coughs> or 3000 for family. Option one, unlike the 2014 plan, this is a first dollar deductible plan, so that 750 needs to be met first before office visit copays apply. This does not apply to pharmacy copays. Any single employee in this plan has a 750 single deductible, and any family has a 1500 deductible by two or more people in the plan. Coinsurance will continue to be covered at 100% after deductible. Copays will now have an out of pocket limit. The employee premium share will increase from 12% minimum to 15% if the employee continues to participate in the health risk assessment. If they don't participate, they'll have to pay 18%. <coughs> Spousal surcharge will increase from $50 a month to $100 per month. These changes will reduce the city's cost for health insurance. In 2014, we currently pay $649 per, per month for single, or $1,524 for family. In 2015, that cost will be $620 to the city and $1,456 for the family. Keeping the same city contribution amounts, the Salary and Grievance Committee decided to explore a high deductible plan with consumerism in mind. Many options were reviewed. The 1500 3000 plan was decided upon. Under this plan, the, the most, most employees have the biggest challenge with finding that $3,000 in the deductible. And with this plan, any one person or more people have to uh, hit the $3,000. That's a big shift from our current plan. There is some good points to this program. All preventative appointments continue to be covered at 100%. Some preventative medicines are also exempt from that deductible, but most pharmacy costs have to be applied towards deductible first. The county clinic will continue to be available at no charge. And coinsurance is covered after that deductible is met. Like option one, there's an out-of-pocket expense that is now applied to office visits, so there's a cap on copays. Many public and private employers in the area have moved to this consumerism model, but we recognize that moving to a high deductible is not easy for employees and their families. In an effort to assist, the Salary and Grievance Committee has decided to uh, go with a couple of recommendations. First, continue the same funding level as the 750 plan. Employees who choose this plan will benefit from a reduced premium contribution. In 2015, if they choose option one, they'll pay a 109 per month or 257 for the family plan if they participate in the health risk. If they choose option two, they will have a $55 per month cost or 129 for the family. That's a savings of $54 a month for the single or 128 per month for family. <coughs> the spousal surcharge does apply to this option as well. The second thing that the committee has decided is that we would uh, help fund a health savings account. A health savings account is an account that is belongs to the employee and it's created for the purpose of paying medical expenses. The HSA is only available with a qualified high deductible plan, and it belongs to the employee. If the employee leaves employment, their account goes with them, it's portable. In 2015, the city will help fund the employees at HSA with a contribution. For single, the contribution will be 750 and for family it's 1500 so basically 50% of the deductible 
Our goal is to contain current and future costs associated with providing medical insurance and the benefit for employees in this new option <coughs> If the employee takes the savings from a reduced premium at, and puts that into their HSA account, they will almost meet or exceed their deductible amount in 2015. For single, that would be $1,398, and for family, that's $3,036. And the best part for employees, if they don't use the funds in their HSA this year, they don't lose it. The account continues to grow. Any questions? Go ahead, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you. Sandy, can you uh, elaborate on the city's contribution to the HSA account? Is that a one-time thing? Is that going to be a yearly contribution? You, you is, said that if they don't use it, it grows. If mm -hmm. they don't use it and it carries over, then does the city then apply funds as well that next year? How does that work? What we're looking at this year is that the reserve fund is <coughs> substantial enough that we can help fund that account through the reserves. Next year, it's a, a whole new ball game if we have the funds available, if the program's working based on feedback, we will take a look at that next year. It's a yearly decision. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, just to add on to that a little bit, um, keep in mind that the employee has the ability to put money away into this as well. Um, Although our deductible is fifteen hundred and three thousand, depending on single versus family, um, employees each year can contribute roughly up to about six to six hundred for a family and thirty or about thirty three hundred for a single. So again, they've got the ability. And that's all on a pre tax basis, um, you know, that they can use for you know ongoing expenses. So there's that savings component is, isn't just the city's putting the money away. The employee also has the ability to do that as well. Thanks. We have about 30% of our employees contribute to a flexible spending account, which is a use it or lose it. If they modify that and make it their contribution to the HSA, then they won't lose it. Any other questions? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Sandy, would you explain to the audience what the spousal sh surcharge is and what the change is from last year? If, this, if <coughs> an employee has a spouse on the plan and their spouse is employed and eligible for insurance, but continues to take our insurance, they have to pay an additional fee. And so last year the fee was $50 per month, this year it will be $100 per month. Seeing no other questions, Sandy, thank you very much for the presentation and thanks to everyone who worked on putting this plan together. Thank you. <coughs> For our next presentation, I'd like to ask UW Dean Jacqueline Joseph Silverstein to come forward. Uh, they're going to be you know, the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan is celebrating a significant anniversary. It's their 50th year in operation, and I have a special proclamation to present to Jackie today in honor of this. Uh, from the Office of Mayor, City of Sheboygan, Proclamation. Whereas UW-Sheboygan has educated thousands of students since it's opened in the fall of 1964 in its current location, it has provided quality liberal arts education to area citizens for more than 50 years. And whereas UW-Sheboygan facility and staff have dedicated their careers to the, the campus and the success of the students while conducting scholarly research that furthers understanding in their disciplines with some spending more than 40 years on the campus educating young minds and preparing them for future careers. And whereas UW-Sheboygan has entered into collaborative degree partnerships with four-year institutions to offer students baccalaureate opportunities in such in-demand fields as nursing, organizational administration, engineering, human services leadership, special education, and elementary education, giving these residents uh, access to higher education without having to leave Sheboygan. 
And whereas due to the commitment of the Sheboygan County government and local private donors, the campus has expanded over the last 50 years to offer new learning environments for students in the fields of fine art, science, technology, engineering, through the construction of the Learning Resources Building, the Fine Arts Building, the Physical Education Building, the Frank G. and Frida K. Bratz Science Building, the Acuity Technology Center, and the new Plastics Engineering Company Center for Engineering Studies, which is slated uh, for construction and completion in 2015. Whereas today is the start of the next 50 years for UW Sheboygan, educating our local community and preparing them for new careers, higher learning and leadership. I now therefore, Mike Vandersteen, by virtue of the office vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, to hereby proclaim Thursday, October 9th of 2014 to be UW Sheboygan Day in honor of the campus's 50th anniversary. Congratulations, Jack. <coughs> and uh, would you like to say a few words first? Thank you. On behalf of the campus, I want to thank you for this honor and recognition for UW Sheboygan's 50th anniversary. While the history of UW's presence in Sheboygan goes back almost 80 years to when a couple of courses were offered by circuit riders out of Madison, it's the opening of our current campus in 1964 that provided a true home for higher education within our community, a home that provides access to a higher education for those who might not be able to otherwise avail themselves to it, and a welcoming physical environment that facilitates student learning. It's thanks to your support, the support of our community and its leaders, and your commitment to higher education that our students are able to begin their journey towards their educational and career goals right here in Sheboygan. We are proud to be part of a partnership with our community that makes this possible. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to the uh, public forum. Uh, this evening, we have one gentleman, Bennett Kuhnert. Ben, would you come on up? <coughs> and Ben, I need your home address, please. Uh, 1427 North 10th Street, Sheboygan. OK, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for giving me the opportunity to speak to you on what I feel is a very important matter. <coughs> Evidently, uh, I'm not sure if it's just the Sheboygan Metro's uh, policy or if it's a city policy, but evidently, uh, one can be punished for doing the right thing. Uh, I'm referring to an incident where it involved a driver that he responded to an uh, came upon an accident and he assisted and as a result he got a three-day suspension and I'm sorry but when you have a person that's in dire <coughs> need of help they may be lying on the ground with, suffering from a heart attack they might be need uh, having that diabetic low sugar thing where all they need is a piece of candy to save their lives I'm sorry but when you're talking a city employee being punished for doing the right thing, for being a good citizen. I, I'm sorry, that's, as, as a citizen of this city, I cannot stand by and watch that happen. So I'm requesting, I sent a letter to Sheboygan Transit and they have it on the agenda to file. Um, granted, they said they would bring it back up at a later date, but I'm a little bit old school. Uh, when you say you're going to file something, that means it's dead. It's dead in the water. That means someday, or it may be your loved one sitting laying on the road, and basically the Sheboygan Transit, or I'm sorry, Sheboygan Metro, would basically drive by. They will call their supervisors to call 911, but basically they'll just wave. Although that driver could have come, gotten off the bus and performed CPR, or whatever might be needed to save that person's life. We're talking a life. Seconds means everything in the case of an emergency. And I'm sorry, but it should be city policy, and I request that this city, you're the councilman here, because you guys are in charge of this city, to pass a 
policy or make a policy that no city employee <clears throat> should ever worry about losing their job or be disciplined for being a good citizen, for saving somebody's life. That's all I need. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Next, we'll go on to the mayor's announcements. Tonight, I'd like to recognize some individuals who've been assisting us for the last year. Um, sometime last spring, we decided to close some of the entrances to City Hall and have everyone come in the front door, which has handicap access, access as well as regular access. And uh, we decided that it would be a good idea to ask some volunteers to assist us in greeting the people that, that come into City Hall and we put together a, a desk and a, a workstation uh, for that purpose. And then we went to the Senior Center and, uh, and some others and, and asked for volunteers. And there's four people that are regularly volunteering right now in this role and uh, putting a lot of time and effort in to make uh, everyone's visit to City Hall a little bit more pleasant. So at this time, I'd like to call those people forward and give them a certificate of appreciation, give them a little thank you for, for this effort. And, uh, and then Chad Pelichek's going to come up and he has some additional comments. So first of all, I'd like to call up Marge Mattern. Marge uh, works every uh, week on Friday morning. Marge, please come forward. Marge, there you go, and thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. <laughs> Next, I'd like to call up Mary Nowaki. Mary works Tuesday afternoons and some other times as needed. Mary, thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate your help. Thank you. You're welcome. Next is Mary Turk, and Mary uh, works uh, Monday um, mornings pretty regularly and a few other times as well. Mary? Thank you, Mary. And last but not least is Harold Beeble, the father of our Director of Public Works, David Beeble, and he works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings. Harold, can please come forward. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to our volunteers. I just want to use this as a public service announcement. For those of you that are out in the audience watching the council meeting, we do have openings available um, in City Hall. So if anybody is interested in uh, donating some time, we have Friday mornings open, Monday p.m., Wednesday p.m., and Thursday p.m. So if anybody's interesting, if interested, please call the Senior Center at 459-3198. We would love to have a full schedule. It's only a three-hour stint. Um, so if you're interested, you can either stop by and talk to one of our uh, gracious volunteers and ask them how it's been going. We've been trying to keep them busy with uh, scanning and, and file sorting uh, for the building inspection department, but um, we've always got something to do and it's a good experience. So if anybody out there is interested, please contact the Senior Center. Thanks. Thank you, Chad. The uh, superintendent of uh, parks, Joe Curlin, is scheduling a meeting tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock at Cleveland Park for anyone who's concerned about uh, a proposed playground layout. So there's going to be some new playgrounds installed there, and he wants to get some feedback. If there's a uh, chance of bad weather, they might be meeting at the DPW offices on uh, New Jersey Avenue in, in place. But right now they're planning it at Cleveland Park in the playground area. 
Our planning department is conducting a five-year community needs study to include in our five-year consolidated HUD plan. And there's a link on the front page of the uh, city website to take a short survey. So we're hoping people will consider taking that survey and help us to put the best plan together for that HUD plan. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to a hearing, uh, hearing notice pursuant to Chapter 65.90 of the Laws of Wisconsin is hereby given that the annual budget hearing will be held in the Common Council Chambers of City Hall in the City of Sheboygan on Monday, October 6th of 2014 at 6 p.m., at which time any taxpayer or resident of the governmental unit will have the opportunity to be heard on the proposed budget. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Is there anyone that would like to speak? One last time, is there anyone who would like to speak on the city budget? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close. Second. Thank you for that motion. Support, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Items three, that'll include items 3.2 through 3.12. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all reports of the committee, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Doug it. Thank you for that, that motion. Is there any discussion on anything on the consent agenda? Uh, Alderman Lassard. Yes, I'd like to pull 3.5 and refer it to, I'm not sure what the appropriate committee would be. The uh, committee just had that on their agenda tonight. They held it in closed session, so they have uh, dealt with that matter this evening. Does that affect your motion? Um, yes. Okay, is there any other discussion on the uh, consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Didn't come up on my screen. Shall I mark it? Uh, that would be a I. Okay. It'll be fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to reports of officers, uh, items 4.1 through 4.6 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items uh, 5.1 through 5.3 will also be referred to various committees. <coughs> Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is an RC by finance to whom was referred Resolution 72 of 1415 authorizing a transfer of the appropriations in the 2014 budget and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Aye. <laughs> Old school. Old school, right. 15 ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is an RC by law and licensing pursuant to RO number 119 of 1415, recommends that the beverage operator's license application 0545 be denied based on his failure to accurately reveal all his relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations related to the license activity and his record as a repeat law offender. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. 
Thank you for that motion and support. Other discussion? Is Jared Romaneski here this evening? Yes. He is here. Yes. Um, for his record that uh, we learned about at our, our meeting was he had a 2005 disorderly conduct, a 2011 disorderly conduct, a 2013 misdemeanor disorderly conduct, a 2013 building code violation, and a 2013 disorderly conduct. Um, the police department was concerned because um, the disorderly conducts did occur mostly at taverns, um, at Riki's walkabout, um, so we did get a negative recommendation from the police department. Um, three aldermen voted, one abstained. We had a denial of two to one for the three that were able to vote. Thank you very much. Mr. Romanowski, would you like to make any comment or statement? If you do, just please step to the front at the podium. Uh, like I said, I'm not a perfect person at all. I'm not per trying to say that I am. I think that everyone's gone through a rough spot in their life, and that happened to be my personal rough spot in my life, dealing with family, job, and other issues. Though I don't think I always maybe did the right thing all the time, I always tried to. Um, Again, I went to a lot of personal expense. The most recent convictions were all because of my personal interaction with two police officers. And I think both of us were in the wrong. And I've never had disdain for the police uh, or the sheriffs. In fact, a lot of my families are. And after trial, where I went through a lot of personal expense, the judge talked to the police officers themselves, as well as I did, offering my apology for any part in it, even though I was already proven innocent. As far as not listing the stuff that was on there, again, like I said, even though it did say list everything, I C-capped myself and I put everything that was on the C-cap on the application. And again, I'm not a perfect person. I think if you could talk to most people that know me, they know that I'm a good person, and I do a, a excellent work at wherever I go. And all I just ask for is reconsideration and try me if it doesn't work, and if it happens again, obviously we know it doesn't work, but all I can give you is my promise and my heartfelt, I guess, uh, pl uh, plea to you to do so. Thank you for that statement. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I have some questions for the gentleman. Should I stay up there? Sure. Yep. Thank you. If this license is granted, where, you, where will you be working? Susha's. Uh, has your employer uh, mentioned that if you do not have the license that you will not be able to work because if you do not have the license, I believe you can still work, but you can't be a loaner, you can't close. So if you don't get the license, will you still be able to work there? Uh, not really, just because the volume of people doesn't really uh, make business sense to have two people there at any given point if, with the exception of tournaments and things like that. Do you have any other employment? Uh, no, that's currently what I do. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, two, two quick points. Um, the owner uh, or the general manager agent of the place did send out an email in the last couple of days to all of the uh, council. Um, you know, it was a very, um, excuse me, very compelling on your behalf, Jared. Um, you went through some personal things um, over the last couple of years, uh, made some mistakes. What have you done to rectify so this stuff doesn't happen again? Again, I try to make my presence anywhere in Sheboygan limited to three places. I go, well, I go to home, a gas station to get gas, and then I go to Susha's or Walkabout, where the average age of the patron is probably about 70. So uh, a lot of my altercations have involved people that have known me from the past and younger, to put it bluntly. So 
I try to limit myself to see anyone, let alone just my friends who I consider my family that are there and stay at those places where there's never an altercation, ever. Go, go ahead. How, how long have you been working at Sushas? I uh, just, uh, just applied for it before. I came back here for a job and that didn't work out, otherwise I had moved out of state beforehand. Any other discussion? Very good, you can step down. Okay, if there's no other discussion, the motion on the floor is to deny the license. Will the clerk please call the roll on that motion to deny the license. Nay. Three ayes, ten noes, two abstentions. Motion is defeated. Anyone care to make a positive motion? Alderman Vander, we I'll make a motion to approve the license. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. We now have a, a motion on the floor to approve the license. I'm sorry, who seconded the motion? Kevin. 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 Is there any other discussion on this motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Aye. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I don't get it. I got it here. Lone voice. I lost it. Nobody put it in. Twelve eyes, one no, two abstentions. Motion passes. The next item is item 6.3, which is an RC by Committee of the Whole, to whom was referred resolution 67 of 1415, <coughs> extending the special charge for residential garbage and refuse disposal services provided by the City of Sheboygan through December 31st of 2018, and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, uh, move that the um, Reported the committee be accepted and adopted and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The, the, uh, the, rec the uh, committee of the whole recommendation is before us. Is there any discussion? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I'll start. I'm sure there'll be more. <coughs> I'm not going to support um, extending the garbage fee as, it's, as is, is explained in this document. Um, I think at first it's important to remember how we got here approximately three years ago. Some of us were here, some of us weren't. Um, we stood in this chambers and we discussed a budget deficit of approximately 1.5 to $1.8 million. And at that time that was what was explained to us and that we had to do something to fill that hole. Um, and that was really where the garbage fee came from. Um, at that time, it was described to be a three-year sunsetting fee in which it would give this council time to either grow our tax base or reduce our spending but get our house in order. Um, here we are three years later, and we're having the same conversation. Um, on your desks, there should be a document that I requested a few months ago in, res in reference to general fund balances. Um, first, I'd like to start by saying these are not my numbers. I requested this from the finance department, Nancy Buss, uh, graciously supplied this. Um, so again, these are not my figures. These are the ones that I requested and she was able to supply. If you go back to 2011, 2012, 2013, right in the middle of the page, there's budget surplus numbers that explain surplus funds at the end of each year. Um, again, in 2012, when we were coming into that budget year, it was explained that we were gonna have a $1.5, $1.8 million hole and we had to do something. At the end of that year, it turned out that we actually had a budget surplus of approximately $3.9 million. So even if you took away the garbage fee, we would have had millions of dollars left over. The same thing occurred in 2013 to the tune of $1.3 million, and in 2011 to $1.4 million. Bringing that surplus funds of 11, 12, and 13 to approximately $6.8 million of excess funds. 
meaning we've overcharged our citizens to the tune of $6.8 million in those budget years. And now we're standing here asking them to pay an extra $5 for a garbage fee and to extend that fee. Um, I guess I really can't stomach that. I think it's our job to settle the budget problems without asking them to pay an extra $5 a month for their garbage fee, especially since we've charged them an extra $6.8 million. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about being short-sighted, about looking into the future, about making sure that we, you know, take a, a big picture approach to this. And I understand that there's a lot of things that, um, you know, are out there forecasted that are certainly being brought up. Um, unfortunately, one of the things that I've always learned um, being around politics for all of these years is that anytime there's excess funds, somebody always has an idea on how to spend that money. Um, I don't think that's the right approach. We obviously need to spend within our means. We need to spend the money that we have to spend, and we need to make sure that we're charging our citizens the amount for their services. Right now, as far as I see it, we owe them $6.8 million worth of services, and to charge them another $5 for a garbage fee just doesn't sit well with me. So as I see it, I think we need to do a better job. We need to find ways to control our spending and control again, the cost of doing businesses and services here in the city. Um, so I won't support this going forward. I think the citizens have been charged enough, and I think it's time that uh, we do our part and either cut our services, cut our spending, or I guess take a, a more realistic approach to what our actual expenditures are. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm not gonna be supporting this either. Uh, one thing that I didn't hear uh, during the committee of the whole meeting was really any talk about and following up a little bit on what <coughs> Alderman Van Akron said about the taxpayers, the people that are paying the freight. Uh, and I want to just pass on a few statistics, and I, as I pass these on, I want you to think about your constituents. Middle class income adjusted for inflation is the same as it was in 1999. In the last six years, median income is down from about $55,000 to about $51,000. The U.S. unemployment rate dropped last week to 5.9%. Sounds like good news. The actual unemployment in Sheboygan is over 10%. When you, can, when you consider that the labor participation rate is at the lowest point in this country since 1978, the labor participation rate is currently 62.7% of working adults in the United States. 92.6 million people have given up looking for work and are not currently in the workforce. Based on the above, I think very few of our constituents, when they got their paychecks last Friday night, were so happy that they said, let's pack up and take the kids to Disney World. Many of our constituents, whether they're either retired or working are still hurting. And that's why I'm not supporting the garbage fee. And again, I think there's really no hurry in passing this budget in two weeks. I'd like to see the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee or the committee a whole, again, take another crack at this and see if we can uh, cut some spending or I think Alderman Koth had some pretty good ideas at the committee of the whole meeting but under the circumstances and the situation that our constituents are in, they've already paid uh, over almost $200 the first three years. And if we kick the can down the road for another four years, uh, it's going to be uh, six times seven, $420 that our constituents are going to pay, actually more than that, because the first year the garbage fee was more. So uh, we've kicked the can down the road for the last three years. And I mentioned at the committee of the whole meeting, that when I voted for this budget back in 2011 that, that included the garbage fee, that I was assured that the three years of 12, 13, and 14 were gonna be ways to sunset this garbage fee. And actually, I was the alderman that made the motion to sunset this thing at the end of 2014. And I believe, if I remember correctly, it, almost, it passed almost unanimously, if not unanimously, to sunset it. But We've kicked the can down the road for the last three years, and I've been told at the committee of the whole meeting that we shouldn't look back. And uh, I don't know what some aldermen have been told, but I have very little confidence in the next four years that we're going to address this problem and cut the spending. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Hammond. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to kind of, and I, you know, Alderman um, Van Akron's assessment, um, although I'd wish the chart would have maybe went back to 07 and 08, um, would have maybe told a little bit of a different story. But I'd like to just consider for a moment the ramifications of taking dollars out of reserves and reducing funding sources. Uh, everybody in the room is exactly right. When the garbage shoe was put out, it was that or outsourcing um, garbage. Um, in 2011, keep in mind this was uh, pre what happened down in Madison, um, whether it's Act 10, Act 34, whatever act it is, um, that changed the landscape pretty significantly. And we can't let that um, you know, kind of get swept under the rug because it does play a part in what we are looking to do. So let me just talk about some points of taking out of reserves and getting rid of the revenue. First, we have a deficit, as many know, um, or at least those who were at the Committee of the Whole meeting, of 536,000 projected in 16, 430 and 17. Um, the motor vehicle fund will add another 225,000 to the general fund in the next two to three years due to that's depletion because it was taken in 07 or somewhere in that ballpark to fund the pension liability. Ses special assessments fund that will be depleted in four to five years. That's probably another three to four hundred thousand dollars on the general fund. We have two and a half million dollars to combine dispatch in 2016. And if we use that as many, again, those were here at the cap, uh, committee of the whole meeting. Um, if we bond for that, we have no money for capital if we continue on our current borrowing rate. This surplus has been allocated, um, if you recall, um, the council passed um, resolution, which many in this room voted for, um, to move, use our surpluses for A, to build our reserves up to um, a meaningful and healthy number, and then the remainder was supposed to go to IT, infrastructure improvements, economic development. It wasn't be to fund operations. Uh, in fact, it actually says in the um, unassigned that undesignated fund balance will not be used to cover shortfalls in operations, and that was voted on um, by this body just a couple years ago. Um, the, the surplus we have um, had um, has brought our reserve funds back up. It has helped uh, redo some of the roads that sorely needed it, redo some of the infrastructure that sorely needed it. Um, you know, 750,000 is now currently going towards economic development in our downtown area. Um, the um, remainder um, could possibly go for things like paying for combined dispatch or a portion of it so we wouldn't have to bond for as much and that money um, that we bond for could in turn go back into capital improvements. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, again, we look at the surpluses in 2011, a lot changed in 2011, 2012 that we weren't anticipating. I don't think anybody in this room actually anticipated what happened in Madison would have happened and the benefit that our budget would have, uh, would have had for it. So to say that that was planned is a little unfair. Um, furthermore, I don't think if you look at the surpluses going forward that that's necessarily going to be sustained. So if we start pulling money out of reserves, and I agree with Alderman Van Akron, if, we, if we're not going to continue the garbage fee, we need to look at what services we're going to get rid of. Um, you know, the word cutting expenses is somewhat nebulous. Um, we've had many meetings on this, both finance, committee of the whole. Um, this budget's been in the council since June, and I haven't seen a expense reduction plan from any other older persons um, outside of the finance committee. Um, after years, we've finally um, put together a, a, what I believe, a financially healthy reserve plan, whether it's work comp that was literally on its threads in 2010 and 2011. And again, one of the things to keep in mind is once we get rid of this fee, um, it's gone. The only other option at that point is a wheel tax. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. I know, again, it's, it's, it's great to look at these numbers and say, yeah, we can take it out of reserves. But at the end of the day, um, when 16, 17 hit, there's no other options other than raising taxes or cutting services. So if we do pull the money from reserves, what's the answer to 2016 and beyond? Well, we already talked about HSAs um, for the city, and I think that's a great option. Um, um, I would like to have gone to it sooner, but as a compromise, I think you know this upcoming year of traditional versus HSA, um, let the employees make a decision, but eventually that's where we're gonna have to go. Um, reducing staff and service, um, you know, again, I don't believe that we're terribly fat and flush um, with a bunch of extra staff that are running around doing a whole lot of nothing. Um, 
pull more money from reserves. And again, we've seen how that ends in 07 and 08. Um, again, those weren't on here. Um, but 07 and 08, you can see in 09 where our um, undesignated fund balances were. They were low. And you know, S&P and Moody's didn't t particularly appreciate that. Um, we could take out additional debt. You know, everybody knows we've got additional levy under the debt, but again, as I've uh, indicated many times, once we start pulling out debt for operations, it becomes a death spiral. Um, and keeping in mind that we've already reduced debt from 60 to 27 million over the last five years. Um, as interest rates start to creep up, any new additional debt's just gonna get that much more expensive for us um, in the general fund. Much of the concern I've seen has been about the, water, the garbage fee being on the water bill. When constituents have called, a lot of them are annoyed that it's on the water bill. They'd rather see it on their tax rolls if there's gonna be an increase so that they can at least, if they do uh, file a Schedule A, can at least take that as a deduction. And I agree with them. In Committee of the Whole, I made the suggestion that we um, raise the levy up to its max uh, or as far as we can go. But keeping in mind, um, you know, yes, I understand people's salaries and, and in many areas of the country um, have been flat, um, but we've also kept the tax levy flat over the last five to seven years. Um, and everybody that was on the council this that time and this time can be proud of that. So I think um, one of the things we need to look at is um, if we're not gonna keep the garbage fee, we're not gonna move it over to the levy, um, what services do we cut? I don't agree that it should go back to strategic fiscal planning. Everybody knows what the options are that are on the table. And they, if the community of the whole or this body needs to make those decisions if, it's, if the garbage fee is not going to go back uh, or not going to continue on. So um, I think there's been some options. I've heard options from closing fire stations to moving um, employee contributions for health insurance to 25%. I've heard other ideas regarding capital. And those are all good ideas. Some have merit, some don't. But none of them will entirely solve the problem in 16, 17, and going forward. And one of the things we've tried to do, and it got a lot more difficult um, when our hands got kind of tied with taxes and fees and those types of things, is look at a budget that makes sense going forward and not look at a council in 2017 and say, hmm, yeah, we screwed you. Um, we want to make sure that whatever we do now makes sense, not just in 15, but going forward. Thanks. Thank you for those comments. Under other discussion, Alderman Donahue. Um, following up on <clears throat> Alderman Van Akron's um, uh, position here with regard to the undesignated fund balance. I'm just looking at that document, and um, just to reply, uh, there might be some, some sense that the city has been involved in runaway spending, that we haven't been disciplined, we haven't been looking at how we can cut budgets and so forth. Um, okay, in 2009, actual expenditures, $36 million. 36.3 million, 2010, 34.4 million, uh, 2011, 34.3 uh, million, uh, 2012, 32.5 million, uh, 2013, 33.8 million. So in essence, the city, I think, has been doing pretty well in terms of reducing its expenditures. It has come at a cost. The city isn't, you look around at our trees, you look at our streets, you know, we've made these dramatic cuts to public works. Um, if we get rid of the garbage fee, those dramatic cuts really are going to have to start coming from other places. And I, I just keep thinking, you know, and Alderman Bourne said, talked about the fact that incomes have been completely flat, and we know that. And it is a serious, serious problem in this country. Our expenditures have been flat or going down as well. When people get paid, you're right, they aren't talking about going to Disneyland. <clears throat> On the other hand, it may be that when people are getting paid, they're not saying, and now I've got to pay $5 or $2.50 for that, you know, to support my city. If this had been a tax, if this had been folded into the levy, we wouldn't be talking about this. It's just the odd thing about this having been pulled out as a standalone proposition. We have done I just want to acknowledge, all of us to acknowledge that we have done a very, very good job in the city in the last five years in terms of being economically uh, responsible, uh, feasible in terms of looking at our future. That's what we've got to do tonight. 
it's really nice to, go, you know, to you know, read the newspaper and say, Alderman so-and-so speaking for the taxpayers, saving people $5 a month. But we have a bigger responsibility, and it's to look, you know, talking about what Alderman Van Akron said about kicking the can down the road. Let's kick this can down the road. Let's kick this $900,000 worth of income to the city down the road and see what it looks like. This is a beautiful city. We love living here. I walk around and I think that this is just really one of the most gorgeous places that I've ever lived in. I grew up here and, and I have seen tremendous improvements over the years. So we cut out $900,000. We're going to start cutting cops. We have to. We're going to have to start cutting firefighters. We're going to have to. There's going to be more crime. We're going to have to cut library hours. Chief Don Mogoski said that one of the most effective ways of dealing with juvenile crime is the Mead Public Library. That's where kids can go, be supervised, learn, have a good time, do all those things together. So pretty soon, Alderman Lassard's talking about the broken window, window syndrome. That's going to be a walk in the park because there's not going to be money to do anything because once this fee is gone, it's gone. We can't add it back in. So in 2016 and 2017, we got rid of $900,000 in, in revenue that we cannot recover. It felt good at the time. We could say to our constituents, we held the line, we reduced that fee, that $5 a month that you have to pay, you don't have to pay anymore. But then we have a city that is hobbled by reduced fund balance. That means increased interest rates because the, the Moody and, and other bond people don't like it when our reserves go down. They don't like it. We've reduced our police officer, our police force. We've reduced our firefighters. Our library isn't open as much. The trees, the trees in this community are in big trouble. They're going to be in much bigger trouble in 2017. So you can say, if you want to cut this fee tonight, I want you in this council in 2016 and 2017 so that we together can try to work with the havoc that that will wreak on our city budget. We, we have done a fine job in the last five years at holding the line. Don't let anybody tell you any differently. We have saved money. We've reduced expenditures. Our, our revenues are increasing because Sheboygan is a really good place to live. And more people are coming here because there are nice amenities. There's good parks. It feels safe. The roads, well, some of the roads are in really good shape. Some, some need some work. But we're going to become one of those cities that, you remember what a nice place Sheboygan used to be? It used to be a nice city, but you know, that it just, I guess they didn't have any money to keep their streets up. They didn't have enough money to keep the police in, in place to fight crime. They didn't have enough money for the building inspector to help people, you know, to identify, you know, neighborhoods that are going down. That's the legacy that we're looking at. So it may feel good tonight to vote against the garbage fee, but it's not going to feel good in 2015, 2016, 2017. If you vote against the fee tonight, I really want you on this council in three or four years, and I want your good ideas about how we try to save this city. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to, uh, I guess, respond to some of those things. Um, I thank uh, Alderman Person Donahue for bringing up the expenditure side, because I, I do agree with her. I think the city has done a good job controlling it, its expenses. Um, however, at the same time, passing budgets that were almost identical year after year and charging the taxpayer the same amount of money, and that's what's led to these surplus funds. Um, and I guess I want to respond a little bit as well. I'm not advocating taking out of the uh, undesignated reserve balance. I simply am, I guess, pointing out that the figures seem to show that the taxpayers have done their part, and I think we need to do ours. Um, again, looking at the, the document, the unreserved funds from 2009 to 2013 have grown almost $8 million. Um, that's a significant growth in the last five years. Um, don't get me wrong, I understand how that got there, um, and I didn't agree with it then. However, I, I think we've done a good job filling, 
that savings account, and I think we need to do a better job of, again, controlling costs, but also growing our tax base. I think that's a place that we are moving in the right direction. Um, Chief Amodio, while discussing the budget at Public Works, indicated that he felt by 2016 and 17 that we would be in a different place financially due to the new construction and millions of dollars of new uh, um, tax base coming into the city. I think we are growing in the right direction as far as growing that tax base. So I do think it's a two-pronged approach. We need to grow our tax base as well as try to reduce our spending and do our best to um, be good stewards of taxpayer money. Uh, again, I'm simply pointing out that the numbers don't lie. It, it's clear that the taxpayers, I feel, have done their part. They've given us more than enough money to cover expenditures for the last several years, and I think we need to do a better job of trying to, I guess, take the burden off of them. Um, you know, in, in a room of mostly conservative minds, I would say, um, you know, I think we have the ability to not have the answer be, let's charge the people more money. And I, and I guess I, I won't support that always being the case. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I will be supporting this um, in the past. <coughs> I'd, I haven't, but I have for the past couple of years for, um, for a couple of good reasons. Uh, with the with the surpluses we have been seeing, uh, it's been mentioned already between all the stuff going down on, in Madison Act 10, Act 34, all that good stuff, and just good management by our department heads, we have been able to have surpluses, and it's going to help us in the long run. There's a lot of things that um, it's going to benefit us, and when it when it comes to bonding, when it comes to our health insurance funds, or uh, all that stuff, I, I don't think anyone can really truly debate that. My issue is that I, I keep hearing about how this was supposed to sunset and people were promised this, people were promised that, but the reality is in the past three years there have been a lot of positive changes by certain members on the council, certain members within the city. However, from the body itself, there have been no true recommendations to actually come up with this shortfall. There have been no real answers. So you can, be, you can rail against this all you want, but unless you actually have a way to solve the deficit, you're just blowing hot air. So unless someone can actually tell us how we're going to make up this deficit on this budget, just voting against it to vote against it out of principle, it's only going to get you so far. And it's not going to get you very far at all, in my opinion. Once again, we have done great things in the city. There's a lot of good things coming. I, I don't think we need to be short-sighted and vote this down just because it's going to feel good, as Marilyn Donnie has stated tonight. Yeah, it would feel great. Personally, I own two houses in this town. I own my mother's house. I own mine. So I pay the $5 fee on two different houses. Do I like it? No, but do I understand the importance of it? Absolutely. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I, too, am going to support this, and um, I share some of the same feelings uh, that uh, Alderman Carlson um, just um, reiterated to the, the body. Um, I, I'm frustrated that, you know, you pe people can, you know, grandstand and say, I'm against the tax, that they increase the fee, uh, the taxpayers have paid enough, they've done their share, yet not having any concrete way to solve the problem. So, it, it, you know, I would certainly say by now everybody's had enough time in enough of the documents in front of you. You've had all the <coughs> figures from every line item. You could easily look to see uh, what service you want to get rid of, uh, what people, what departments you want to cut, and, and bring that forth, and, and let's have that discussion. But to say that you're just going to, you don't agree with it and you're not going to support it without having any type of solution, I find disingenuous. You, there's been plenty of time to look at this. Um, I personally have not had one constituent of mine uh, tell me, you know, Alderman Bellinger, I want you to cut this service, or I think that we, don't, we, need, we, we could get rid of this or that. Um, you know, my constituents tell me that they want the services that they have. They certainly want the city and this body to be prudent in the way they spend those tax dollars, but nobody is telling me that they want services cut. They want to keep the services that they have. They like their parks. They like the city. They, they like the police protection, the fire protection. You know, they, they think they've got a good thing going right now, and frankly, that's why they live in the city. So um, I, I'm going to support it, and, you know, until I hear a better solution, which I'm not hearing tonight. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, I've been doing budgets for the better part of 22 years, and I wish it was an exact science. I really do. I wish I could put together a budget in October 
and it would come out exactly as I had done it um, on December 31st of the following year. Unfortunately, that's a utopia we don't live in. You know, our department heads, um, some of us on the council, have done a pretty good job over the last several years of, of saving some money, whether it's leveraging grant funds and matching dollars so that we can do things and, and do bigger and better things, um, whether it's department heads controlling unemployment, or excuse me, uh, overtime, um, whether it's um, taking some of those surpluses um, and moving them into um, other areas. Uh, but you notice from the chart that um, uh, Alderman Van Akron put is that our actual revenue, you know, over the last couple of years has remained a little e flat or even a little less than it was five years ago, not significantly. But the one area is the inner fund transfers. And those are transfers that we get from whether it's the ambulance fund or other things. Um, again, if we rely strictly on those to fulfill our budget gap, I think that's making a huge mistake as well. So again, I wish budgeting was an exact science. I wish we could sit here and say this is exactly to the penny what we're gonna spend in 2015, and all of this would be a moot point, unfortunately. Things happen, things change, things break, things don't break, things go our way, and we just have to roll with what it is. Again, a budget should be close, it should be a good guideline, um, but I think you know, we need to be conscious that this is just a budget, it's a working document. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as I've expressed, I'm not going to support the document um, again. And I respect everyone's opinion in this room, and I think you know this lively debate is good, and that's something that should continue. Um, in that spirit, I'd like to offer an amendment to the document. Um, I'd like to change the date uh, for the four years and make it a yearly review. I think this is a discussion that should be had on a yearly basis. It should be reviewed on a yearly basis. You shouldn't just get a four-year rubber stamp, put it in a drawer, and forget about it. Um, I think we should look at this on a yearly basis. If the council decides to pass this, I think it should be looked at every year, whether it's needed or not. Um, and, and again, this isn't personal for me. I just feel that um, there's a lot of different opinions in the room, and I respect those. But I, again, I, I feel that I'm not going to support it. But I would like to amend it to read uh, December 31st, 2015. Second. We have an amendment on the fl floor. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Although I, uh, I appreciate Alderman Van Akron's um, comments, I think you know, looking at these things in one-year cycles is what gets us into these problems in the first place. Um, you know, I could understand if people may think four years is too long. I can live with that one, but certainly one year is too short. Um, I would much rather see if we were gonna do something like this um, where we're gonna extend it, it would be two years. Um, and um, instead of this kind of one year circus that we continue to go through. We know our problems exist in 16, 17. If again, going back to the budget's not exact science, if things go right um, from an economic development standpoint and some of the things that are going on, there could be some additional revenue coming in in 17 and 18 in 19 and probably be dried up in 20 at our current rate. But again, uh, we know 16 is gonna be a challenge. So again, why would we you know, uh, cut ourselves off at the knees right away for 2016? So I wouldn't be supporting one year. I could live with two. Uh, thank you for those comments. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you. Um, the reason I, I'll oppose the amendment is that uh, it's twofold. One, uh, I just think we should spare ourselves this conversation each and every year. Uh, it, to me, it's, it's not fruitful. I think we need to start thinking about the garbage fee as not a separate standalone rescue for a uh, municipal organization that's out of control. It was, a, it, was a, a sh it was used to fill this particular gap at a particular historical time. But if we can reframe it and think, this is just the way that in five years we haven't raised taxes except for this one small piece and that this is a key part of the revenues that we bring in. Because of the odd way that the legislature is working, we can't be honest about it and just say we increase taxes this tiny amount. We have to say we have this fee, and now if we have this fee and we get rid of this fee, then we can't do this fee again, and we can't increase our municipal taxes, and so on and so forth. So we're getting these odd directions from Madison. They aren't very <coughs> rational. But for us to debate this year after year also is not very rational. Um, I think 
I think we just need to move on and just consider this to be part of the income that our city has. Again, we have done a very, very, very good job of stewarding our constituents' funds, of running a really nice city, and we ought to just move on with it. Keep in mind that vision of the city, the, this beautiful city on the lake, and that in this room we have the ability to keep that vision and that reality going, and I think we should just get on with it and just stop talking about this. Thank you for those comments. Okay, we have an amendment on the floor to change the uh, year, uh, January, rather, uh, the end of 2015. Any other further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please a, call the- I got a question. Alderman Boren. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, we'll be voting on just the amendment. We're not gonna be voting on the entire document. Is yep, that correct? That's correct, just okay. the amendment. Thank you. All those, uh, will the clerk call the roll for passage on the amendment to change the date to the end of 2015? I'm up and running now. Oh, you are? Okay. <coughs> not. Yours isn't? No. <coughs> Let me go to a different screen. Well, one at a time. Okay, sorry. There it is. Five eyes, ten no's. Motion's defeated. We're back to discussion on the main motion. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess if you, uh, first you don't succeed, try again. <laughs> I will, uh, I guess, amend it to uh, 2016 then. And again, I'm just reiterating, I think this discussion is good. I, I don't want to see this discussion go away. I think this is something we should be doing, is having an oversight of our budget process and deciding, again, is this fee is our tax base, is it actually necessary? And I think a good re healthy review of that, a good healthy exchange of ideas is, is a good thing. So I don't have a problem with having this discussion on a yearly basis or in this case on a bi-yearly basis. Um, I just feel that again, by putting a sunset date on it for two years, it doesn't stop any future council just like this one may do um, from extending it further. But I do think it should have a closer review um, so I will make the amendment to change it to 2016. Second. We have a motion and a second. Alderman Hammond, under discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, I can live with this. Um, I think one of the things that I've been trying to press upon people is to think further than the 12 month window that we budget for um, every single year and try to look at what the ramifications of what we do and what we are going to do are on the budgets of future councils. Um, I think Alderman Donahue put it, per, put it pretty well when she said, I'd like to be those people that you know, vote against it to um, you know, be in this room when you gotta try to figure it out in 16 and 17 um, and beyond. So I think um, I can live with it for two years. Um, I agree with Alderman Van Akron to a point where it's a good healthy debate to have, but we gotta have everybody here to have that debate. Um, and people have to be offering suggestions and solutions that are reasonable and achievable. Um, and it has to be a longer term plan. We've presented some things, we've been working on health insurance, we've been working on um, knocking down interest expense, we've been working on various other things over the last three or four years that have gotten us um, at a much better spot from an expenditure standpoint. But we also know there's some biggies coming um, and we need to be prepared for them. So, uh, I can live with the two years. That gets us, um, I'll think it a little bit further ahead. Um, but uh, again, please keep thinking ahead. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Bellinger. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Alderman Hammond has, has made the, stated a good case for the, the upcoming liabilities or challenges that we're gonna have in, in future years. But one thing that he forgot to mention uh, was according to Director Beeble, we've got a five to six million dollar problem with this building here. So uh, on top of everything that Alderman Hammond mentioned before um, and, and challenges that we're gonna have, we're gonna have that issue that we're gonna have to deal with too. So when you're voting, think about you know, that on top of 
the other issues that we've got coming up as well. Thank you for those comments. Okay, I don't see any other uh, calls for discussion. The motion on the floor is to change the, uh, the fee to end in the end of 2016. Will the clerk please call the roll for passage. This is the amendment? The amendment. Okay. <coughs> Correct. Eight eyes, seven no's. Motion passes. Now we'll go on to the final motion as amended. Is there any further discussion on the motion on 6.3, uh, resolution number 67? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll for the motion as amended. Eleven eyes, four no's. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other matters. Item 7.1 is RO by the city attorney submitting as a matter of record the original recorded warranty deed to the city of the former Boston store property, 727 North A Street. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to accept and file. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Next is item 7.2, which is an RO by the city clerk recommending granting <coughs> various licenses, specifically Bethlehem Lutheran. Alderman Hammond. I think that would be. Or Alderman Vanderweel. Sorry. Okay, I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Item 7.3 uh, is an, or an ordinance by Alderman Bellinger creating a Shoreland zoning ordinance for the city of Sheboygan in con uh, conformance with section 62.23 and 62.233 of the Wisconsin statutes. That'll be referred to the Planning Commission. Item 7.4 is an ordinance by Alderman Donahue creating division six, section two, 420 of article four of chapter two of the municipal code relating to the director of human resources and labor relations. That all be referred to the salary and grievances committee. 7.5 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a notice of injury from AT&T regarding an alleged incident with city employees mowing outside the right of way causing damage to a marked AT&T buried telephone cable. That would be referred to the Finance Committee. <coughs> Item 7.6 is an RC by salary and grievances to whom was referred resolution number 66 of 1415 by Alderman Donahue, Dassler, Bourne, Hammond, and Vanderweel and recommends adopting certain changes to the city's medical benefit plan effective for calendar year, year 2015 coverage establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates effective for January of 2015 coverage and thereafter. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move that we accept, adopt, and pass the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, I want to um, thank the city staff. Um, you know, health insurance is not, unfortunately, an easy thing anymore. Um, it's gotten quite complicated with plan designs, cost, all that type of stuff. Um, and I think the HSA um, is a way to go. We had talked about a matching contribution, and I suggested that we look at going to um, first dollar on January 1 so that employees have the ability, if something comes up and they are in the HSA, that they can, uh, they'll have money available to pay for those things. Um, I hope 
uh, ask employees to be patient as we roll this out. There'll be, you know, there'll be meetings outlining how the HSA works for those that want to get involved with it. Um, uh, but I, again, I think this is going forward um, definitely the way that the city needs to go, um, not only from a consumerism standpoint, but candidly from a cost standpoint. So um, again, I just wanted to say thank you to staff and um, tell you I support this. Thank you for your comments. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I also support this, and I want to thank Sandy and also uh, our Chairman of Salary and Grievances, uh, uh, Alderperson Donahue, for the work that she's do done on this. Uh, we found out during our research that the City of Appleton has had uh, a high deductible plan for about four years now, and they're up to 70% uh, participation. Uh, one of our neighboring counties, which I don't have the statistics on, but I know Calumet County, I believe has had one for three years. And uh, all our person Donahue in her research also found that I believe Plymouth and Sheboygan Falls are also going to high deductible plans. So I, I think it's the way to go. I think it's a win-win for both the, uh, for the city and also the employees. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to other other matters that received after the agenda was published. City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2014 and June 30, 2016. That will be referred to Law and Licensing. And 8.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Dan Wagner requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 918B Michigan Avenue. That will be referred to public protection and safety. Next is a motion to convene in closed session. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption in section 19851E for the purpose of discussion and formulation of negotiation strategies relative to the natural resource damage assessment process where bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Or are we going to do voice on that? That would be a oop. Is that a yes? Fifteen eyes. We'll take a five-minute recess and reconvene at seven twenty-six. <laughs>